Bob has created the most marvelous apple pie ever. He has put everything together in a secret recipe and he wants to send the recipe to Alice. He puts the recipe in an envelope and sends it over to Alice. But what if uh, Evil Eve gets a copy of the mail while it's in transport from uh, Bob to Alice? Eve can read and steal the content of the envelope, getting hold of the secret apple pie recipe. In this case, Bob can encrypt the recipe before sending it to Alice. It will be sent encrypted, and if Eve steals the envelope, the content will be unreadable for her. Alice decrypts the package before reading it. To encrypt anything, we need a key. So Bob creates a key, a secret password. His uh, secret password is uh, my secret key 2015. In order for Alice to decrypt the message, she needs to have the same key. With any other key, she will not be able to decrypt the message. What we have here is a symmetric crypto. It is called symmetric because the same key that is used to encrypt the message is also used to decrypt the message. In this case, the key needs to be distributed among the parties before it will be used. If Bob makes the key, he needs to find a way to give the key to Alice without Eve being able to see it. It needs to be shared prior to the encrypted communication starts. This is uh, wh what is called a pre-shared key. This sharing of keys uh, is often performed out of band via another media. If the encrypted communication is done over internet, the pre-sharing of the keys can be done via SMS or via phone call. In our scenario, Bob and Alice have both created a key pair of asymmetric keys. Bob has a private key that only he knows. He handles it with care, making sure that no one else gets hold of the private key. He also has a public key. This key uh, he distributes to everyone who wants to have it. He might even put it on his public web page or in the bottom part of all outgoing emails. Alice has a copy of Bob's public key, and probably also Evil Eve. These two keys, Bob's private and his public keys, are created at the same time. They have a relationship. Everything that is encrypted with one of the keys can be decrypted with the other. In fact, the only key that can decrypt something encrypted with one of the keys in a key pair is the other key in the same pair. And it goes in both directions. If data is encrypted with Bob's public key, the only key in the world that can decrypt it is Bob's private key. But also, if the data instead is in encrypted with Bob's private key, the only key that can decrypt that data is Bob's public key. So Bob has his key pair, where the public part is available to whoever, and the private part is stored secretly. Alice does the same, creates a key pair, keeping the private key to herself and giving the public key away to anyone who wants it. We can also assume that Eve has a key pair of her own. Maybe Bob and Alice has a copy of Eve's public key, and also that Eve has Bob's and Alice's public key. The important thing to rem remember is that neither Alice or Eve knows Bob's private key, and neither Bob or Eve knows Alice's private key. So what Bob does is to create a random key for encrypting the message. With a random key long enough, he can be sure that Eve cannot read the apple pie recipe. The only problem here is that neither can Alice, because uh, she does not have the random key neither. So Bob encrypts the random key and sends it over to Alice. For encrypting the symmetric encryption key, Bob uses Alice's public key. When Alice receives the encrypted key, she uses her private key to decrypt it. By using Alice's public key when encrypting the symmetric encryption key, Bob knows that the only person that can decrypt it is Alice, because the only key that can decrypt the information encrypted with Alice's public key is Alice's private key. So Alice decrypts the symmetric encryption key, and with that she can decrypt the apple pie recipe. 
But uh, why didn't Bob just encrypt the recipe with Alice's public key in the first place? Why bother to create a random key, encrypt the recipe with that key, encrypt the encryption key with Alice's key, and send that encrypted key separate from the message? The reason for that is that there is a big drawback with asymmetric encryption, which is the method we use when we encrypt with one key and decrypt with another. Even though this way of encryption is uh, much more secure, it is thousands times slower. So to encrypt lots of data, we need to do symmetric encryption. Since the randomly generated key is small, Bob can easily encrypt that with asymmetric encryption. To secure the recipe even more, Bob creates a hash of the unencrypted message. By doing that, he ensures that Eve doesn't modify the encrypted recipe in transit between Bob and Alice. Even though she cannot read it because it is encrypted, she might be able to alter the content either for the purpose of a plain sabotage, or if she injects packets in the stream to brute force the symmetric encryption key. So by sending the message through a hash method, Bob gets a digest. If Alice runs her received recipe through the same hash method, she can compare the hashes to see if they are the, the same. If the digest that Bob calculated is the same that Alice calculates, she knows that no one has changed the number of eggs in the apple pie recipe. But uh, what if Eve is uh, really clever? If she can get hold of the uh, symmetric encryption key, she can put whatever she wants into the encryption algorithm and send encrypted messages. By doing that she can of course also create the digests and uh, it may, might look like the messages coming from uh, Bob. So we need to secure the digests so that uh, Alice is confident that the message is coming from Bob and no one else. Bob does that by uh, encrypting the digest with his private key and attach that to the encrypted message. When Alice receives the message, she takes the uh, uh, attached signature from the packet and uh, decrypt it with Bob's public key and get a uh, unencrypted digest. She then calculates her own digest of the uh, decrypted message and she compares those two digesters and if the digest she calculated by the hashing algorithm of the plain text message is the same as the digest she uh, decrypted with Bob's public key she knows that the message is authentic. So what Bob just did when he uh, encrypted the digest with his private key and attached that to the message is that he signed the message. Signing is when you make a hash and you encrypt it with your private key. When Alice receives the message, she verifies the signature of the message by decrypting the signature with the public key of the sender and verifies the digest with the digest he, she calculated herself. By doing that, Alice knows for sure that the encrypted message is coming from Bob and no one else. What is left here is that Alice needs to tell Bob that Alice has received the recipe and that it has come to Alice and to no one else. What Alice does is that she takes the digest of the received message and she encrypts that digest with her private key and sends it over to Bob. What she is sending is Alice's signature. When Bob receives that, he uh, decrypts it with Alice's public key. Out comes a digest, and he verifies the digest from the original message with the digest he received from Alice. And if they are the same, he knows that the message was sent and received by Alice, and Alice has confirmed that she has received it. And Bob knows for sure that no one else but Alice received it because the signature comes from Alice. And he knows that because it was encrypted with Alice's private key.
So what we have here is message confidentiality. The message was sent by Bob and received by Alice and we know for sure that Eve could not read it because it was encrypted. What we also did here was uh, we distributed the encryption keys confidentially and encrypted. We have message integrity. Alice verifies the signature and makes sure that it was received the way it was sent. We have a non-repudiation of origin in the way that uh, it is signed by the sender and no one else but Bob could have sent that, that message because the signature was created by, with Bob's private key. And we have non-repudiation of delivery so that uh, we know that Alice has received it and no one else and it was uh, confirmed by the signature that was created by Alice and it could only be sent from Alice because it was encrypted with Alice's private key. This was an example of how you can secure a communication channel between two parts with asymmetric uh, encryption. Thanks for listening. Bye.